Root development is one of the many challenges often faced by farmers during propagation. Even though there might be a bot, to develop root is very difficult and that's why today we want to show you one of the natural ingredients such as onion which is used actually to stimulate root formation in cuttings. These natural hormones in onions are so strong that just a few days after planting, it is evident to see a new shoot growing up and turning into a full bright seedling within 25 days. So what is actually in onions that actually helps root to develop this way? There are two main hormones in onions that are useful in air layering process. These are auxins and gibberellins, very useful in developing new roots. Auxins are plant growth regulators that promote cell elongations. These have a cardinal role in coordination of many growth and behavioral processes in the plant's life cycle. Gibberellins are plant hormones that regulate various development processes, including stem elongation, germination, dormancy, flowering, and leaf and fruit formation. Here is the application on the air layering process and also in developing roots from stems. Here normally, a farmer can just start with a normal twig that has a shoot on one of the nodes. You can see under the node of the leaf, you have the shoot that's coming out. And what you have to do is you use a sharp knife and clean it on one side. The side that is directly opposite the node that has the new shoot. Then you slice your onion very thinly. You slice it very fine and make sure that you use the onion bulb, the part that is cut, to scrub it on the part that has been peeled off so that the hormones can actually enter into the uh, scrub part. Slice finely the onions and you use it to put it on the ground where you plant the stalk that have been scrapped. You know that during the germination process, there's always uh, the need for moisture. So you have to use two grown tomatoes that are almost red to put at the two end of the skirt stalk to provide moisture and also nutrients. Put it on the ground to actually indicate where you will have to dip further because the two bulbs of tomatoes will have to go into that spot and place your onions neatly in such a way that it will actually fit into the part that had been uh, the stalk that has been scrubbed well. Watch and see how the farmer does it. It's so nicely done and so well, easy to copy. Now, make sure that you cover slightly with the soil. But then, don't forget to cover too much because you don't want to uh, cover the ground so much on the new shoot that is already coming out. Make sure you cover lightly and don't forget to add cocoa peat. And after adding your cocoa peat, cocoa peat actually make the moisture to remain on the ground. You make sure you water it. Water sparingly. Don't water too much. Look for a nice place outside and put it there. And don't forget to cover it with a transparent container so that the moisture can remain inside and this will help the shoot to develop properly and grow bright. Make sure you visit the place regularly to remove all the weeds around and make sure that it is not too crowded. Remove the wheat, see how the farmer is doing it. Get all the wheat out because when the wheat develops roots, the roots will actually reduce some of the nutrients that are meant for the new shoot to grow. It should not be too dark. And when you open, just look at it. 
it has redeveloped. So when you cover it, you make sure you leave it there, let me say for three weeks before you open. And when you open it, it's already like this. You water it. Always water. But when watering, don't water too much. You water sparingly. Just as I said, keep watering sparingly. And after watering, you can then cover it up and allow it again for a week or so. Let's look at it now. Pam pam. You see, in about five to six weeks, you have your seedling, your mango seedling ready for planting. Look at it. Very nice leaves. Good shoots. You just keep watering. Some people may plant it now when it's already at the seed week. Some people, you can still leave it if you want it to make up to two months or two and a half months. It depends on you. Some people may actually decide to plant it at this age. It just depends on how your farm is. But then, if you want to keep it longer, you make sure that you remove it and report it in a larger container. Because this container is so shallow that the root will soon outgrow the container. So you make sure that you lift it out of the smaller container that's, that is very shallow. And you can now replant it on a bigger container or directly into the farm. Remember that the root at this stage is still very tender. So if you are lifting it, you make sure you don't destroy it. Lift it with care. You see, even after spraying the roots, you will see how far they have developed. So well, so nice. You see, that's the miracle of onion rooting hormones. Nature really has all in stock for us. As I said, if you want to lift it again for some time, you have to transfer it into a bigger container. But for me, if I do this type of thing, I would prefer to just transfer it to where it will be permanent rather than changing containers all the time because that will actually reduce uh, labor. Except if your farm is really far, maybe in the forest, and you are scared that animals may come to eat the head. However, if you have animals eating the soft head of the mango trees, I think at this stage, new shoot will still uh, come out from the notes of the matured leaf that are already green. So for me, I will take it directly into the farm and plant. And behold, because it is made from cuttings, you can expect to start seeing your mango fruit next year. It is that easy. It is that easy. So please, these are the type of videos I will be making to share on this platform so that other farmers can copy and will help to increase food security. If you like this type of content, you kindly like, you share your opinion in the comment section below. Share, share to as many farmers as possible. Let's grow this platform where we share information to help each other to increase food security, especially within sub-Sahara Africa and say goodbye to hunger. Zero hunger by 2050. Let's learn to propagate, plant, and start harvesting as soon as possible. It is that easy. It is very, very easy. Simple techniques that are cost-effective, and, you know, we don't have to be buying hormones. Hormones are so expensive. So we'll get into this channel to make sure that we can actually bring out all those natural tricks and natural method that we can use to also do things and do it very fast you know the ones that really work like this ones i hope you enjoy it i really hope you enjoy it and not only watching it but copy it and actually go start taking action take action do it behind your house get your ceilings ready and by march april will be planting so start now by putting everything in check so that by next year, March, you will have uh, seedlings ready for planting. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and see you tomorrow. Cheers.